The Nelson River in northern Manitoba is one of Canada's most powerful rivers. Here, a watershed of over one million square kilometers meets the end of its journey into Hudson Bay. With five major hydroelectric dams along its path, the river's natural course has been altered forever. But downstream, there lies an abandoned port preserved in remarkable condition. And despite its remote location, it is one of the most important national historic sites in all of Canada. But traveling to York Factory down the Nelson is not an easy task. With class five rapids, four meter tides, shifting sandbars and the ever-changing outflow from the hydro dams, river conditions on the Nelson are dangerously unpredictable. Luckily, there is one local tour guide who has the experience and the watercraft necessary to navigate this river. Clint Sawchuk and his partner Grizz operate Nelson River Adventures out of Gillum, Manitoba. To take on these giant rapids, Clint drives a five-ton jet-powered boat equipped with two engines capable of producing 800 horsepower. Not too bad. Flying down the river at 45 miles an hour, Clint has to time his tour perfectly. On the Nelson River, the tides rise and fall twice daily and can easily strand the boat. But thanks to years of experience and GPS technology, Clint is able to stay on schedule with ease. In Manitoba, there is no other river quite like the Nelson River. As it gets closer to Hudson Bay, giant sandbanks on either side rise 50 meters in height. On top of the banks are the Hudson Bay lowlands, a unique bioregion where the boreal forest transitions into the Arctic tundra. This massive wilderness area is overflowing with wildlife, and the river draws in animals from all around. The area is home to several caribou herds, who often descend the high banks to get away from the bugs. bears are also a common sight, as the mouth of the river borders Wapusk National Park, a large region of protected polar bear habitat. Recently, it was discovered that an area just southeast of the river is home to an unusually high number of polar bear maternity dens, making the river's edge a hot spot for activity. As the Nelson merges into Hudson Bay, a strange sight appears on the horizon. An old railway bridge spans half a mile off the banks onto a small island filled with wreckage. This is what remains of Port Nelson, one of the biggest engineering blunders in Canadian history.
1912, the government decided to build a northern port where the Nelson River meets Hudson Bay. Because of silt accumulation from the Nelson's powerful current, an artificial island had to be created in the middle of the river. But unfortunately, the project was doomed from the start, as construction was plagued with bad weather, poor planning, and volatile labor disputes. Material shortages during World War I finally sunk the project in 1918. Now, all that remains is a bridge to nowhere and an abandoned dredge, once used in the futile effort to dig out the silt for ocean freighters. Up close, it's a remarkable sight and a humbling reminder of our tendency to underestimate the power of Mother Nature. Leaving Port Nelson, Clint has to go eight kilometers into the open ocean and then turn 180 degrees into the mouth of the nearby Hayes River. After going another eight kilometers upstream on the Hayes, the tour finally reaches its destination. This is York Factory, one of the most remote and significant national historic sites in Canada. For nearly 300 years, York Factory was an essential trading post for the Hudson's Bay Company and was the location for its northern headquarters for most of the 19th century. Trappers and traders would bring furs from across the country to this main depot building, where they were distributed onto ships destined for England. From this spot, it is possible to travel nearly the entire length of Canada by canoe, as tributaries of the Nelson River extend to the Rocky Mountains, Lake Superior, and to the Mississippi-Missouri River system. York Factory's placement at the end of the Hayes River has heavily influenced the development of our country, as many of the outposts once connected to this trading network are now major Canadian cities. Our country's history is literally in the ground here, as an ongoing archaeological survey has found as many as 300,000 artifacts and more than 200 marked and unmarked graves. But the interior of the main depot building is probably the most remarkable part of this national historic site. Closed in 1957, the building seems almost frozen in time as writing from its past inhabitants still cover the walls. Hundreds of artifacts are laid out on display, giving a glimpse into what everyday life was like at the former headquarters of the Hudson's Bay Company. The highlight of the tour, however, is on the third floor, when you climb a narrow staircase into the lookout tower. Here you can look down on the Hayes River as the early traders once did, watching for incoming ships and news from across the Atlantic.
Time moves slowly at York Factory as the distance between past and present seems to blur. With so many stories starting right here on the banks of the Hayes, walking these grounds, you can almost feel the weight of our country's history in the air. Combined with the remote beauty of the western Hudson Bay, the journey to York Factory is an experience of a lifetime and one of the most outstanding historic tours our country has to offer. <laughs>